The next time you feel like talking bad about the mother of your child, just remember this. She's the reason you can eat when you want, sleep when you want, shower when you want, go out when you want, drink when you want, smoke when you want, sleep in when you want, chill with your friends when you want, and pick up and go whenever you want. So instead of talking bad about her, why don't you just say thank you for everything she's doing? Because if it wasn't for her, you wouldn't be able to do what you want, when you want. I feel like I can breathe whenever I want because of her. There is an easy way to fix this before I say thank you. We can share care of the kids if you're ready to give up your salary after more than 18 years. Afterward, you can do what you want whenever you want, though maybe not the pricey things you want. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Woman destroys her six-year relationship by cheating and instantly regrets it. Allow us to begin right away. I'm not going to pretend like I've never done anything to hurt a man because that would be a lie. I was married to a man, let's call him E, and I did him dirty years and years ago, back in the 90s. I got married again a couple of years after that, and it was done to me. You know, I got it a hundred times fold, and I deserved it, okay? I deserved it because it showed me a lot about myself. I don't regret any of that happening. It caused me to take responsibility for my actions for doing that to a man who didn't deserve it. I did that. I apologize. He for, he had forgiven me. Thank God. And we're okay. But I believe that that is the reason that God blessed me with a man that I've been with now for 22 years, married 19, because I took responsibility for my BS. I encourage any woman who has ever done that to anybody, take responsibility for your mess. Not at all. So she cheated on a good guy and probably broke up with him for a player or the kind of guy she'd cheat on, and got dumped because of it. Then she used religion to get another good guy from church to back her retirement plan when she couldn't get the attention of the players anymore. Bad guys always use religion to get good guys to back their plans. It's not an accident that religion is one of the main areas where con artists target people. They use faith to hide their bad behavior. It's possible that she has changed, but a good man should marry a woman who has chosen to be good, not someone who will go back to her bad ways. That's what the video today is about. The story is about a woman who admitted on Reddit that she cheated on her boyfriend. Here's something men need to understand about women over 50. We don't care about you. We don't need you. We don't want you. In fact, we really don't want you. We're happy on our own. We're thriving. We're living our best lives despite what you may think or say. We don't have to prove anything to anyone. In fact, leave us alone. Please, block me. I wouldn't care if no men ever commented on my page again for the rest of my life. So my parents, they live in this retirement community, 55 plus, and there's a really interesting dynamic that happens with men and women over 50 in this community. It's actually single men that are in short supply. So when a man becomes available within this community, what you'll see is women starting to bring over food, cleaning his house, keeping him company until eventually one will move in with him and he's off the market. I'm saying this because this message is so unnecessary. Men will not go where they are not wanted. Especially by 50, they are just done trying to please a woman that will never be happy. Really? The retirement community sounds like a really tough game of hungry, hungry hippos for single guys, right? Interesting. Men aren't exotic prizes that can be won by making casseroles and cleaning. The most disturbing thing about this is that you think women over 50 are desperate and men are naive victims who are done trying to please. They might enjoy the company and care, and those women might just like being nice. Your story is full of old-fashioned ideas and completely misses the point. Men and women over 50 can have worthwhile relationships based on friendship and mutual respect, not some weird kind of competition. Like everyone else, men will go where they feel like they are important and appreciated. So stop being so condescending and see that happiness isn't just one thing despite what your old ideas say. If a woman is beautiful, is smart, and is successful, does this make her less attractive? And I only ask this because I've noticed there is like an overwhelming amount of beautiful and smart and successful women who are also by themselves. So I'm just asking my TikTok guys and girls for your perspective. Like, is there a reason why successful, beautiful women 
are by themselves. Women often think that their looks are more important than they really are when it comes to how beautiful they are. Also, things that women think make them more attractive, like money and status, can make them less attractive to men. Men usually don't look for women who are good at making money. They value other things instead. Women often think that looks are the only thing that makes someone beautiful and that money is the only thing that makes someone successful. Men, on the other hand, have very different ideas about what makes a partner attractive and successful. Men usually put traits like being kind, understanding, and emotionally stable above things like money and looks. This gap makes it possible for women to think that their success makes them more beautiful. Hey friends, I wanted to get on here and ask y'all, what is it that you look for in a woman? And it doesn't have to be anything superficial. So for example, me in terms of a man that I was looking today, I absolutely love someone that is completely loyal, of course. Honesty is huge to me. I like a man who's nice and like actually nice, like holds the door for people, is polite and just nice through and through and shy. A shy guy is where it's at for me. And then in terms of looks, I don't even need to go there. You guys know that I like chunky at funky men. But what is it for you? Like, what does it in a potential partner and just lets you know she's the one? Look at her. Tattooed a lot. Did she believe that a strict man would like her? It's funny how some women look for traditional guys, even though they aren't traditional themselves. There is a clear gap here. Several women today want the stability, loyalty, and morals that traditional men give. They want to be with someone who is reliable, works hard, and has a strong sense of right and wrong. On the other hand, they often forget that these guys also have expectations. Traditional men usually look for women who share their values, like being humble, caring about their family, and having a certain attitude that fits with their way of life. If women show themselves in a way that goes against these values, like having a lot of tattoos, it might be hard for them to find the traditional man they want. He literally doesn't exist. This is an advice I've been giving my friends lately to help them get over a guy and it's been working. Because how are you gonna have your heart broken by someone that does not exist? And here's the thing, you lived a life before without this person. You were not aware of their existence. You did not depend on their opinion of you or of their approval of you or their ability to choose you. I don't care if this sounds delusional. We brainwash ourselves all of the time and there are a few objective truths in this world. And if I say you don't exist, you don't exist. You can't be upset over someone not texting you back that doesn't exist. Your emotions cannot be influenced by a ghost. Repeat after me, this man is a fever dream. This all might sound a little crazy, but I'll tell you the psychology behind what we're doing is we are practicing non-attachment. So much of our attachment and dependence on people is from the stories that we tell. It's not even based in this reality that we think it is based in. Okay, enough is enough. That's why they make guys go to therapy to think this way. This is why guys say no over and over. Truth that comes from a counselor, or at least someone who says they are one. This truth that we believe it's based on. There is no such thing as more than one reality. There's no sci-fi movie going on here, and this is proof for you. Your truth tells you that I'm not real. That's too bad, because I'm here. If you say you're a psychologist, how can you lead people astray? If you are a real doctor, how are you still allowed to work? So much in women that drives mm. me nuts is Wait. women who can't apologize. Oh, accountability. But they cannot own up at all like they refuse i so much so that a guy that i dated before i met my husband i remember we had some type of argument and mm -hmm. i said i'm really sorry i shouldn't have said something that way and I, he almost passed out because he was like no woman in his life had ever of, said i'm sorry of course and he was like what the of, hell of course and i, I was raised like my my parents my mom and dad raised me to be like when you do something wrong or you hurt somebody's feelings and you, you go back and you apologize. So I, that was bred into me. Hey, mama didn't raise no fool. So I, I, but I see women, I, even my friends will have a fight with their boyfriend or their husband and I'll have to tell them, listen, you need to apologize because sometimes it's going to be you. I see. I can see that she's the only woman in her group of friends who is in a relationship and tells the truth which just goes to show how hard it is to find a date in the feminist West. I think these women are better than single women, but they still can't take responsibility for what they do.
of the seven women who were taken, let's say one, is really responsible. What do you think this number means for single women that good guys won't even touch? We're pretty close to zero, since there is none, because they'd be taken if they kept going. We've been seeing each other for two years, and nothing is going wrong. It's great that we get along. We're both crazy about each other, and there are no signs of a bad relationship. I'm so lucky to have my boyfriend, because he's an angel, in every way. Our groups of friends are the same. Click the like button to let people know you enjoyed the show. You'll know when I add new shots if you click the bell. Thanks for everything you've done. Do something right away. Come back to this page to see more videos of people hitting walls.